So who are you? I'm James Salzman. I'm with TalkNicer.com is my website. I've been a speech enthusiast for the past 20 years. I started at the Sphinx Lab back in Carnegie Mellon 20 years ago and I've been working on speech software ever since. I, I know a few Carnegie Mellon people. I know AJ who has a car that you talk to and it's always interesting to talk with people who are studying speech because I, I sense that this world is just about to flash over and, and really become useful for speech which it hasn't been up to now. Speech has had a difficult history. Uh, the, the military has been pushing for transcription off of uh, telephone conversations, which is like trying to do dictation from uh, five people in different rooms at the same time. It's a very difficult project. So, uh, you know, th but they've been neglecting educational applications of speech recognition technology, which has been terrible for the fundamentals of the science. And uh, only recently have uh, there been investments made in educational applications, which I think will filter up through the, uh, the rest of the speech uh, technologies and allow much better dictation rates, uh, better word error rates and dictation, as well as uh, the command and control that we use to, to call people by name on our phones and that sort of thing. Interesting. So your system uh, helps people who are learning to speak uh, get better at it, right? And it, it, you talk to the phone and it tells you whether you did well or, or bad. Tell me a little bit about your system. Th th that's right. It's, um, it's a, a pronunciation assessment system, which is the forefront of instructional technology. We're here at the 50th anniversary of Plato, the, um, the instructional technology system, which has been able to provide multiple choice and fill in the blank questions for uh, 50 years now. Yeah, we're here in the Computer History Museum in, in Mountain View. In the Computer History uh, Museum a, where the 50th anniversary celebration is being held. And uh, it's a great um, honor for me to be able to be here because I'm trying to get the Wikimedia Foundation to adopt a gift, which is Moodle's microformat. You can, you can find out about it at microformats.org okay. slash wiki slash gift. It's, um, it's an assessment content format that will allow you to mark up uh, multiple choice and fill in the blank style questions um, using fewer characters uh, than, than other formats. And uh, there's already 5,000 hours of courseware from the Open University in England, which is available for export. Anybody who has Moodle can export it into the GIFT format, and anybody who adopts the GIFT fo micro format will be able to import it and use that for self-study questions. But text is, is, is a known quantity. Speech yep. recognition for pronunciation analysis is new. So uh, uh, I'll show you the demo. I don't know. Uh, I know I'll send you a screencast later, I guess. but. Um, this is a, a, a phrase here I recorded earlier. There's red for not quite well pronounced, and there's green for well pronounced, and yellow is borderline. Yep. And uh, you want to try it? You can try a different uh, sure. phrase here. Just to read off the screen. You can get words wrong if you want. Wait for the counter to start running. Okay. Uh, it's not running. Oh, it's not? Sorry. Oh, I, I must have hit it twice. Sorry. Uh, let's reset it. There we go. <laughs> Seek a solution in building their confidence through a holistic approach. All right, we'll see whether we got that in there. Yeah. So that plays, and then you can send it up to the server. Right, this is a client server system using only acoustic scoring. Now, seven years ago, I did a Windows CE handheld system using edit distance scoring with the sensory fluent Now, you just said a whole lot of words that I don't, you know, most people don't even know what you just said. Translate that to normal speech. Well, you're right. I said a whole <laughs> lot of words. In fact, I was saying something as I was as I was stopping the recording, which is why this last word is scored poorly acoustically. Okay. Um, there was some extra stuff. So the uh, word approach at the end of this phrase got scored uh, red. Everything else is green and yellow. There's a little bit of background noise here, and you you were, you were distant from the microphone because we were holding it up to the camera. Yeah. But. Um, this uh, is evaluating your pronunciation using acoustic scores and the duration. And what does acoustic score mean? An acoustic score, it? when you have a speech recognition right. system, an acoustic score is how well the system thinks you said what you were expected to say. Okay. Um, how well your phonemes, your, your pronunciation matched the acoustic models, the hidden Markov models, that the speech recognition system uses in order to figure out what you said. Okay. Um, the, the, the actual algorithm is called the Viterbi beam search. Wow. The data structures are called hidden Markov models and, and Kepstrel coefficients. K 
Kepstrom is a spectrum with the first four letters reversed. It's a second order spectrum that acoustical engineers, uh, even petroleum engineers use when they're sending sound waves through the ground to try and figure out where the oil is uh, or where nuclear bombs are being exploded back when there was underground testing. Um, the uh, Kepstrel analysis is the acoustical signal processing and the hidden Markov models put it all together into phonemes and words and phrases. And uh, the alternative to just acoustic scoring is edit distance scoring, which is what I'm trying to get Google's uh, new startup, Google Ventures startup, uh, uh, EnglishCentral.com, just uh, launched the uh, last part of last year. And uh, they're using acoustic scoring, but not edit distance scoring, which can improve the uh, quality of the feedback substantially. And if you go to talknicer.com and click on uh, one of the, uh, or talknicer.com slash D and, and click on the first link there, D for demo, uh, you'll see the, uh, s uh, an open source lab talk I gave at Stanford in 08 about, uh, it has a link for edit distance scoring if you want to learn more. Okay, so you're using acoustic and edit distance learning? My standalone system, because it tries to fit in a two, two megabyte memory model, uh, it uses uh, Sensory Fluent Soft is the name of the company here in the Bay Area. Sensory uh, makes speech recognition hardware and software. FluentSoft is their software product from the Oregon Graduate Institute. It's now the Oregon College of Health and Science. Very similar to something anybody can download and play with called the CSLU Toolkit. If anyone Googles CSLU Toolkit, they can download and play with that, that recognizer on a PC. But the Sensory FluentSoft is a, flu um, sorry, a fixed point representation, so it runs very fast on standalone systems. Yeah. Um, it's uh, a small memory model. It uses diphones instead of triphones. A diphone is the last half of one phoneme followed by the first half of another. For example, there are about 600 diphones in English. And what's a phoneme? It, it, oh, a phoneme is break like... Break apart a word and tell me what a phoneme well, is. Well, like, like F and S, which uh, is hard to tell the difference if you're, on a sl if you're on an old phone line where you're being sampled at 4,000 samples per second. F and S actually sounds very similar. F is in Frank, S is in Sam. Uh, that's an example of a consonant yeah. phoneme. There's also vowels, and the vowels are uh, defined by two frequencies, uh, controlled by the tongue position, and uh, the, the... It's amazing, you know, what, what goes into speech. I, 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 there's a whole science to it that I just am not, wasn't even aware of. Have you tried the new Google phones, like the Nexus Ones, with their trans oh, Google yeah. Translate? Has yeah, very, a, oh, you got one, one right, right there, yeah. My, my old G1 has an extended battery, but uh, I, I can't run the uh, fancy new speech recognition algorithms yet. Uh, <laughs> still working on no, it. No, it's, it's really cool, and I'm talking with companies like Siri. We interviewed Siri, where you talk to your iPad or your iPhone and tell it, hey, can you get me a pizza? And it recognizes oh, yeah. that well, and splits it apart and, and does some, some searching and some talking to APIs all over the web to get you a pizza. It's really crazy. Yes, it is. Those pizza applications, those have been around for a long time. Pizza and air traffic control have been the, the mainstay of, uh, of the DARPA Defense Department research, they've been funding it, but they haven't been doing the transcript verification tasks, yeah. the pronunciation analysis tasks. Those were all done by the uh, British uh, Defense Research Agency, um, and their patents will be expiring uh, next year, <laughs> thank goodness. Um, and so uh, we're going to see another explosion of interesting technologies because patents are running out? I, I hope so. You know, the big infringers like Rosetta Stone and, and I, well, who knows whether Google's, I have a feeling Google's been doing their homework licensing it. Um, but uh, Rosetta Stone, R-Log, the big uh, software products that you can buy, they used to be like 20 bucks, on, uh, 35 bucks in the software stores. Yeah. Now they're selling for 500. So obviously it is a very lucrative uh, market for CD-ROMs. I'm sure that client server and standalone mobile device software will be just as lucrative and just as profitable. I've already arranged the licenses. Uh, I know that Rosetta Stone and R-Log have not, so it'll be fun to see, uh, you know, Rosetta Stone went public in the yeah. depths of the recession. And they did fairly well over the past year. Um, they were like the only IPO for months uh, for a while. So yep. it's definitely got the market uh, strength behind it. And I, I can't wait to see the, uh, the, the, the high technology pronunciation as opposed to command and control for ordering pizzas or dictation for, for doing web search on your phone. Your product helps people learn to speak. Right, it, English learners of all ages. And how, does it cost any money? To tell me what your business model is. Anybody can go to my website and run the demo for free. Okay. Um, the, I, I'd like to get a larger freemium system going. Um, I uh, proposed it to Google uh, about a year ago and <laughs> they went off and found a patent attorney and 
two, two Japanese engineers instead of me, but I'd love to, I'd love to help them improve their technology with uh, edit distance scoring, which I know they're not using. If you, if you go to EnglishCentral.com uh, and try their demo, uh, you can, you know, like for instance, it'll confuse M's and N's as in Mary and Nancy, uh, uh, F's and S's, uh, P's and D's and T's. Uh, all kinds of uh, uh, phonemes are conflated with if you use ordinary acoustic model scoring, uh, whereas edit distance scoring will be able to uh, zoom in on the differences between the phonemes and eliminate that. So I'm kind of hoping that I can, one way or another, encourage them to upgrade. There's another product I have to tell you about, um, a Bolt, Burnack & Newman, a BBN spin-off uh, based out of Boston. They're huge in China. It's called 8D World. They have a multiplayer online role-playing game where kids in China, it's being promoted by the Chinese Television Authority, uh, can, can log on to the system and go communicate with their friends and people that they meet online and type to them, you know, like Club Penguin you might use. You might see kids using Club Penguin in the United States today. Yeah. But what all, all their point scoring system and uh, feedback and everything that you collect and all the ways to do well in the game, it's all based on how well you're uploading microphone uh, data through Flash, through Adobe Flash. Um, Adobe Flash 10, Flex yeah. 4 has, a, has an open source, uh, or not an open source, but an open vocoder called Speaks that's going up to the servers and these kids that are playing it are learning to speak English because they're being rewarded for doing so in this game. And I think it's a fantastic uh, multiplayer. This is really interesting. Could, uh, my son has a speech uh, problem and he's going to speech therapy. I mean, oh, yeah? he's not to the level where he could use a system like this. But, no, no, it's, but it's, it, I could see that in the future, he's going to need to use a system like this to get faster and get better with speaking, right? I, I've been talking to several speech language pathologists about this and they want it to be funded. They want it to be available, but it's not yet because there are so many people with speech impediments that need practice and they need to get this practice in ways that are give, giving them value. So you're looking feedback. for uh, funding to, oh, yeah. to help you build it out? But yeah, yeah, not as much as I used to be because, you know, everything gets easier and yep. uh, as time goes by, it's, a, you know, just something I could do as a contract. I don't even need angel sky, uh, style investments, you know, it would be an easy contract. Less than 100000 could get it done uh, in a sustainable way because, you know, the, I've been thinking about the cloud and... <laughs> yep. And uh, everything makes it, you know, so many improvements in software technology have made it easier, you know, with Adobe Flash having the microphone upload. Eleven years ago, I was working for Cisco. World Wide Web Consortium invited me as an expert to uh, propose a way for everybody to upload speech in forms. Well, they never went with it because for some reason somebody said it was device dependent, which is nonsense. But now they invited me back. Uh, because they finally realize, yeah, we do need a way to upload speech and Which demonstrates that all sorts of pieces of this ecosystem are all evolving very quickly. We're getting phones now with supercomputers on them, right? Well, and, yeah. you know, basically. What used I mean, to be a room full of the it, things you could see around here. My yeah. phone <laughs> has more RAM than the entire Computer History Museum we're, we're surrounded <laughs> by, so, which is really crazy when you think about it. But now we're able to talk to our phones and coming in 2011 you're going to be able to talk to your phone and do a lot of things with it so it'll be I'm, interesting to see what researchers like you guys well, like you do with it well thanks i hope your your phone will be able to help your kid learn to speak better soon yeah. well thank you so much where do i learn more about you talknicer.com talknicer.com slash d for the demos very cool thank All you right. very much you're welcome Robert. <laughs>